Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Thursday Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel on Think Tech. And today we're going to talk about rabbis. Today's show is called Rabbis for the Rebbe. <laughs> You will hear more about that. So sitting with me now is uh, Rabbi uh, Itchel Krasinjanski, and he's the rabbi for Chabad in uh, Oahu, in Honolulu. And the senior, am I right to say this, the senior Chabad rabbi in the islands, is it a fair statement? Well, look at my beard there. Okay, yeah, there it is. Chief <laughs> rabbi. Age, anyway. Huh? <laughs> and next to him is uh, Rabbi Levi Gerlitsky, who is the rabbi uh, for Chabad uh, in the Big Island, okay? Um, and he's tall, so I guess there's some significance in that. And then we have uh, Michael Goldman, Rabbi Michael Goldman, and he is the Chabad rabbi for Kauai. And there are congregations in all of those places, and the Chabad is all around the islands, and it's wonderful. And we have two more we're going to introduce after the break. So um, we have um, Chabad with us today. It's such a joy to see you and, and have you. But you've been busy this morning. This is not the first thing you've done today, Rabbi. What happened? Well, first of all, Jay, thank you for, uh, for inviting us once again. And it's a great uh, privilege to be with my colleagues from all around the islands. Uh, yes, earlier today we had a very, very special meeting with the governor, where the governor uh, gave us a proclamation that, um, that is called, um, is pro proclaims the celebration of education, uh, uh, Education Day USA, Education and Shearing Day USA. This is something that was uh, established 40 years ago under President Reagan. That they uh, both si both houses, uh, the Senate and the Congress, they all signed unanimously to proclaim uh, one day uh, as the day to reflect on the importance of education and how. Uh, uh, education um, shapes the lives of, of young people and therefore the importance of uh, having education not just to impart knowledge and information. I gave you a big, big uh, Megillah. Right. right. Uh, it, was, it was quite nice. It's framed and everything and I uh, hope you hang it somewhere important. Will do. It's a statement about Chabad and, uh, and he talked about Rabbi Schneerson, right, didn't so he? Right, that's what I was going to get uh, to. He, he's really right. knowledgeable about this, not only about education, but, right. but he knows about Chabad and Rabbi Schneerson. Yeah. Right, so Rabbi Schneerson, who we call the Rebbe, the title of That's the why yeah. rabbis and uh, rabbis for the Rebbe. Right, so the Rebbe is like a term of endearment and it means like the rabbi, capital letters. And the Rebbe was the greatest rabbi of our time. He was a great uh, spiritual leader, not only for the Jewish people, uh, but also for uh, all peoples of all faiths. And the rabbi's message uh, was... And his message, you had a tape of that. You had a recording of that. I have, I have footage of this. It was really something where all the rabbis, all standing together with the governor, and you're listening to Rabbi Schneerson's message. Yes. That was powerful stuff. Yes. Did you, hear the, did you hear what the Rebbe said? Not very well. Why don't you tell us? Well, in short, uh, this was the Rebbe addressing then President Reagan, I believe, at the time, or one of the presidents. And the Rebbe was saying is that an individual that divine providence has, has destined to be in a position of leadership it means that God gives that person the, the abilities to actually fulfill this great responsibility. And it was specifically talking about, in our context, the responsibility of, um, of uh, creating you know, educational materials that help shape the morals and values of the children. It was very touching to see that. Uh, and I have footage of all the, all the rabbis and the people, you know, um, standing around uh, the recording and listening to it so diligently and uh, it was it was actually a work of art to see you all together doing that um, so should I call you Rabbi Levy or yeah, that works that works 
I mean, how are you normally addressed by the whole name? I, mean, I, I call uh, Rabbi Krasnozhansky Rabbi Krasnozhansky, but that could be wrong. Maybe I should call you Rabbi Itchovat. What, whatever rolls off the tongue. <laughs> here. Okay, Rabbi, tell, tell us about uh, life on the Big Island. It's my favorite island, by the way. I have to add that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah my favorite too. <laughs> <laughs> and Chabad came out to the Big Island. It started actually previously with Rabbi Krasnozhansky's son-in-law. Started about eight years ago. And it's really to be a home for the Jewish people, like an embassy, where you would have nothing to do with a state or a government, but has to do, just do with an identity. To have a place where everyone can feel comfortable, regardless of their level of affiliation or how much they grow up with or their knowledge of Judaism. To have a place where they could come and celebrate and connect with God, whether it's through prayer, through a Shabbat meal, through celebrating the holiday. And it's really good. We're really enjoying our time there, having that opportunity of educating. And more than everyone, we feel like we're educating ourselves. We're learning so much from the experience. That's great. So um, tell me about uh, you know, your, the way you see your congregation. Can you define your congregation? Uh, how big is it? Uh, who's in it? Uh, so, what's it like for you? And uh, what kind of relationships you have with them and they have with you? Yeah, so it's, there's all different types. And we have tourists that are coming. Some of them are fully orthodox. They just need some kosher food. We'll have some elders that are retired. Actually, just last night, I was helping one of the elder congregants in our community, Ted Leaf. He's a, used to, he's a retired dentist. He lives there for many years. I was helping him out in his uh, garden. He had to do some work in, <laughs> on, the, on his grass, so I went there to help him out. So it's really... But the role of a Chabad rabbi yeah. is pretty broad. <laughs> it's, it's helping out in any way, and it's not just in religious needs. It could be with kosher food, visiting someone in the hospital. I'm a chaplain at the Kona Community Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I guess the congregants come in all shapes and sizes, all from all walks of life. And it's really, they tell us that what they like about it is that people that live in the Hawaii in general are away from family. The family is all on the mainland, from New York or from another country. And they feel like Chabad gives them that opportunity of having a new family in Hawaii where you're away from everyone. So if I could just jump in for a second, sure. and, uh, following on the heels of what Levy is saying, Rabbi Levy, is that Chabad is different <coughs> than your traditional congregation, and the Chabad rabbi is different than the traditional rabbi. We're not a membership-based congregation. Uh, like Rabbi Levy was saying, you reach out to all of the people in the community, regardless of how affiliated or not they are. So. Uh, you know, so, so there henceforth the rabbi is doing all these different things and depending on what the interest level of the people, Chabad, the whole emphasis of Chabad is to reach out to everyone with love and, and, and sharing and bring them in and reconnect them to, uh, you know, with their Jewish heritage or in the wider message for the wider community is to the uh, the values that uh, we find in the Torah for all people. All people. That's my experience with Chabad. Chabad is very aloha, very loving. And um, you, don't, you don't have to be a regular member of the congregation. You can just sort of drop in, and uh, you'll find that love anyway. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. So um, OK, we, we had this ceremony today. You flew in for this, Rabbi Levy. Um, and you're going to fly back. And then you're going to have Passover. What's going to happen for Passover? It's only next week. It's coming soon. Yeah. So Passover is probably one of the most celebrated Jewish holidays. People that don't attend anything else feel like they want to go to Passover Seder. Brings back memories from their grandparents and you know, family time. Yeah. So we're going to have a Passover Seder on both sides of the island because we're the only Chabad for the entire island. So including Hilo, which could be a far drive for some people to attend. So we have two rabbinical students coming in from New York to run a Passover say there. Oh, the wonderful. Hilo. So yeah. two of them. Yes, yeah, so I'll have two the simultaneously. Island. There will be two Passover say there's, and each one is for two nights. <laughs> That's the tradition that we do outside of Israel. We have yeah. a Passover say there Friday night and Saturday night. Yeah. Well, so it's different in Israel? In Israel, they only do one day. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. It's because back, back in the day, they weren't able to communicate the correct day for Passover. So out of doubt, outside of Israel, <laughs> they would have to do two days just to be yeah. safe. Yeah. So till today, we continue that tradition. Yeah. Mystically, uh, the reason why in the diaspora we do two days of the holiday is because the holiday represents light, God's light. And the darker the place, the more light we need. So in the diaspora, we have two, two days holiday to uh, be able to penetrate the darkness of our surroundings. <laughs> it's really an interesting way of looking at it. I've heard that before. So Rabbi Goldman, Rabbi Michael, 
So Kauai, different. My wife is from Kauai. I spent a lot of time in Kauai. I love Kauai. It's got, <laughs> it's got this, something hearty and meaty and passionate about Kauai. I love the Big Island too. The second but, to us is Kauai. But Kauai is kind of special. And is your congregation special? Is what you do special in Kauai? Everybody, every individual is special, and of course, every Chabad rabbi thinks that their congregation is special. <laughs> everybody, <right? laughs> but yes, of course, I'm biased. I think it's a very special place, very unique place. Yeah. So you flew in today also for the ceremony with Governor Ige. Yeah? Correct, correct. And you, and you flew in with Richard Siegel, who we're going to meet in a minute. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Richard Siegel is, is a lay member of your congregation. Correct. What is that? Lay leader. Lay, lay leader. leader. Well, he's on the board of Chabad of Kauai. Um, but more importantly, Richard is a pillar of our community. He's, uh, he's there whenever something's happening. He's there. He wants to be involved. He's very, um, he cares. He's passionate about what's going on in the community. And he's, he shows up, you know, to learn, to daven, to, to pray, to events. And, and, and he's very supportive, uh, not just emotionally and spiritually, and, and, and helping us do what we do. And uh, he's a very big part of our community. So I reached out to him first, saying, would you come and join this, you know, proclamation, presentation? You spoke this morning at the ceremony. Uh, Rabbi Krasnodzhansky spoke, and then you spoke, too. You want to summarize your remarks that you made to the governor? I met the governor last year. Uh, he came into Kauai for a town hall meeting where anybody could get up and ask a question. And I was actually in line to ask the question that I posed today, but the circumstances didn't allow it last, week, last year, and I, we spoke about Education Day. Uh, so kind of picking up from that, um, one of the things that concerned me in the, in the realm of education was that there was a lack, what I perceive as a lack of enough education in, in the realm of not just the Holocaust as an event, um, but what that, you know, the conversation that comes out of that, what that brings to um, tolerance and understanding of, of the need for different types of people and different religions and faiths and, you know, minorities. If we don't have that education, um, it's liable to recur. And I thought we said never again. We said never again, but there's a rise of anti-Semitism today in the world that's unprecedented in, our gener in my generation. In New York Times two weeks ago. And uh, you know, there's statistics that are horrific. I think I saw a statistic that there was a 70 percent increase in the last five years, or something crazy like that. So, a few months ago, there was a there was um, exhibition at the Veterans Center in Kauai, and it was uh, of of a battalion. The 400 and what was it? 442nd. 442nd Infantry Division or something, and members. Uh, there was so, uh, military from Hawaii that went to rescue Dachau, and they had an amazing um, exhibition which showed Hawaiian people from Hawaii. Of, of people in Dachau. Kauai were were tagging their family members in the in the photos, and they were in uh, you know in Europe uh, rescuing Jews. So there was an interesting connection. And it was underwhelming how little interest there was. And people in the, in the Jewish community reached out to the schools to say, would you bring your high school students? Obviously, some of the pictures are graphic, and young kids can't handle that. But the older divisions should come and see this and learn. It's not in the curriculums. To the best of my knowledge, it's not really presented well in the curriculums. I think some of the schools said they're like one day in the year. There was like a couple of paragraphs in a, in, a, in a textbook where they spoke about it. It doesn't do justice. This is a subject. And um, while there's so many more things that Judaism has to offer, but this is a, you know, a very important point for humanity, not just for the Jewish people. It's so important now. So, we have, we're, we're sort of declining in our sensitivity uh, to this issue. And um, in fact, uh, Think Tech has a show called Bigotry in America where we cover examples of anti-Semitism, but also white supremacy uh, that's going on right now. And then there was a, a piece not too long ago about the increase uh, in that. So we want to cover that. And I would like to actually have you on the show going forward. We can have you on the show while you're here uh, in Oahu, or we can have you show on the show by remote 
uh, from Kauai, because I know okay. they have electricity there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Rabbi Goldman, so, uh, and uh, we, we're going to take a break yeah, now. Okay, sure. uh, uh, Rabbi Michael Goldman, uh, Rabbi Levy Gerlitzky, uh, Gerlitz, Gerlitz, I, I practiced, mm -hmm. and Rabbi Itzel Karnstantansky. So the outer, the neighbor island rabbis we're going to excuse and bring some other people in after this break. Rabbi Krasnodzhansky will stay here and help me navigate these waters with all these rabbis, uh, rabbis for the Rebbe. Say it after me, rabbis for the Rebbe. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Bingo! We're back. I told you we'd come back. Okay, this is Community Matters, and we're talking about rabbis for the Rebbe, with the exception of one of our guests, uh, who is not a rabbi, but he's a lay leader of the Kauai Chabad. Yeah, that's Richard Siegel over there. Uh, and next to him is uh, Mendy, that's short for Mendel. Yes. I never met a Mendel I didn't like. My father's name was Mendel. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, Krasnodzhansky, that sounds so familiar. In fact, you guys look a little bit alike. <laughs> and Rabbi, Rabbi Mendel uh, is in Maui. Mendel from Maui. <laughs> Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank nice you to have us. you here. So, Rabbi, can you, uh, Rabbi Krasnodzhansky, can you can talk about Passover coming soon? It's only sure. a week away. Um, what does it mean in the Jewish religion? Uh, it's really wonderful that uh, uh, Rabbi uh, Schneerson's uh, birthday and, uh, and Passover is one of three or four days away is all it is. Correct. So, um, and it actually ties into the celebration that we just had earlier today, which is about education and the importance of education. The, hol the holiday of Passover is the most important of Jewish holidays and the most joyous and loved, beloved of Jewish holidays. It's, uh, it's, it's a time when families gather together and uh, do what we have, uh, the, me the meal and the, and the traditions is called a Seder, right, as we all know. And uh, every Jew, regardless of how uh, affiliated or not, comes to a Seder, because a Seder is uh, is uh, not only the highlight of the holiday, <clears throat> but it also, in a sense, captures the whole message of Judaism. And the Seder night and Passover night is when it's all centered around the children, and we pass on uh, the traditions to the children in the form of the four questions that the children ask, and the four sons. And uh, you it's know, the youngest person at the table asks the four questions. Yes. I'm in my 70s. <laughs> I always insist on asking the four questions. Okay, there you go. And you probably don't settle for 
But just any answers? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Passover <clears throat> is a very, very special time, family time, it's a time of sharing, and it's the time where we, um, where we teach, we pass it on, pass it on. But uh, there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of um, uh, traditions that are associated with Passover. You don't need any bread for Passover. Passover uh, <coughs> commemorates our exodus of Egypt, the time when the Jewish people, the times of Moses, biblical times when we were enslaved in Egypt, and through great miracles, God took us out of Egypt. Remember? That's the most important thing, isn't it? Yes. We were slaves in Egypt. Right. There was oppression, right. intolerable oppression, and we remember that right. year after year through Time our freedom, lives yeah. for Passover thousands is, of years. Passover celebrates the idea of freedom, freedom. and uh, freedom, as we all know, is is uh, is ear like like ear. We needed to to to, to survive, and um, from the very beginnings of our Jewish faith. Um, this is like the foundation. It's a very important holiday because because of that. Right. Because of those those are basic tenets of the religion, the history, the culture of the people. So my question for you, Rabbi Mendy, is is Passover different in Maui than it is in Oahu? <laughs> it's the same all over the world. <laughs> but the truth is I'll have to let you know in a week because my wife and I we just arrived in Maui six weeks ago to oh, start okay, the Hamad. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so but no, it's the same exact all over the world and the same as it has been for the past couple thousand years and that's exactly what we intend to do is to bring all the Seder and all the classic traditions to Maui. That's great that you're the rabbi in Maui. What, um, wh uh, where were you before? Um, I was born in Oahu obviously and then I went for yeshiva which is rabbinical schooling received my rabbinical ordination in South Africa and got married and my wife and I were living in Israel and then um, we decided to, to, you know, I fought the chief rabbi of Maui, who I happened to have a connection with. I happened to know, yeah. to know someone who knows someone. Yeah, really. So, <laughs> yes, they were looking for a rabbi for the island of Maui, and um, we thought that it was something we wanted to dedicate our lives to. So uh, you're part of a big mishpucha. Seven children already yes. with Rabbi Krasnansky. You're one of them. And there are nine grandchildren, but who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> this is very nice uh, to be in a family like that. So, um, what do you, you know, what's your agenda, if I could ask that, in Maui? Uh, how are you going to proceed as the chief Chabad rabbi in Maui? So, our agenda is that we have no agenda. It's just to, as Rabbi Levy was mentioning before, and my father mentioned that Chabad is a home for Jews, right, everywhere, either the Jews that are living there or passing by or just visiting for a short couple months, and really to just interact with all the Jews and share and love with them, share a tradition, and uh, accept them at whatever level they're holding and to learn with them. And that's how we've begun just in the past couple weeks that we've been there. Thank God we've met hundreds of Jews and there's yeah. thousands more. Yeah. And to proceed in that fashion and that's, that's, that's Very the... Very nice. So you were, of course, uh, you are here and um, you were, at, of course, at uh, the ceremony with um, David Ige this morning. What did you think? Um, I thought it was incredible. I thought it was uh, fascinating, and I thought also it was, as my father touched upon, it truly correlates to Passover, because Passover, it's, as the verse says, that you should tell your children. And the Passover Seder is, as you said, that the children always ask the questions. And to have a day of education right before Passover is the most fitting of things. And especially that Hawaii is geographically the farthest place on earth from Israel. So this is really spreading to the whole world, which is right the, the redemption, the, the, the freedom of going out of slavery is to across all the world and the seas. So that's truly, I thought it was very fitting yeah. and inspiring. Yeah, well, you know, it strikes me that um, Ju Judaism, of course, is, is global because of its long history. Um, what year is it now? 5,778. Wow, God, I was by mitzvah in 5712. It's <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> but, you know, Chabad, Chabad is also global. I mean, I, I sense in Chabad a kind of global consciousness more than, more than most people have. And, and talk about education, such as we discussed this morning, um, education is important to educate people on global awareness and get a feeling for that. So, Richard Siegel, um, you were a pilot, was it? I was a marine pilot. You look just like a marine pilot. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I think that is a compliment. That's, that's, <laughs> so tell us what you're doing as a lay leader in Kauai in the Chabad uh, uh, congregation there. 
Thanks for having me here, Jay, and it's a pleasure. And I'm in good company. Um, I re I'm retired. My wife and I are retired on Kauai. Um, and Rabbi McCall Goldman is the shliach there. That he's the emissary for Chabad, um, uh, and we are um, part of his congregation. My wife and I. So uh, I don't know exactly what the answer to your question is, but it's nice to be there and it's nice to be a part of uh, the action and what's happening. And it's in, and I guess Chabad's been very important to me in theory and in fact around the world. There, anywhere and everywhere, if you. If, if you're traveling, if a person's traveling, a Jewish person, and they want camaraderie or f a feeling of, uh, of uh, resonance or something, where it seems like Chabad is available and offers those things that are important to some of us, many of us. So you flew in uh, with Rabbi Goldman this morning. We flew in together Mi Michael this morning. Goldman, and, um, so and you were at the, you, you flew in primarily for the, the ceremony with David Ike. What, what did you think of it? What did you take away from it? I thought it was very nice. I, I, I was honored to be there uh, and to see the governor. I've seen him lots of times before, but this is the only time in real life that I've seen him. And to hear him uh, make that proclamation, he sounded connected uh, to the Lubavitcher Rebbe and to the communities in Hawaii. And I f was comforted by listening to him and seeing him. He seems like a real person, and uh, it was nice to It was nice impressive. To be there. He, it was he impressive. knew a lot, and he was certainly uh, into education, as he always is. So I, it, we I, have about a minute left. Uh, let let me just and I want to offer you the opportunity to comment on what these guys have said and to close. Sure. OK. So just uh, for the audience's edification about Chabad, the Rebbe, Rabbi Schneerson, was the leader of Chabad, but he was, as we mentioned before, a truly a global leader with a global vision to uh, actually nothing short of transforming the whole world and making it a better place. So the Rebbe initiated what is called uh, the Shluchim Emissaries, and today you have about 5,000 uh, Chabad Emissaries all throughout the world in every country, in every city in the world almost. I don't think we have in North Korea, but uh, uh, in neighboring China there is. Um, and it's, it, you know, we, as you know, the Jewish people are scattered throughout the world. And this is a, uh, what the Rebbe set up is to be able to reach Jews where, wherever they are and with, with a very, very powerful message, a very uplifting and powerful message of Judaism. And um, there was a, rabbi, a chief rabbi of England, his name Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, he once said something very interesting. That the Rebbe came on the world scene on the heels of the Holocaust, from the ashes of the Holocaust, in the, in, in the 1950s when the Rebbe became a Rebbe. And just like, um, so how do you heal or how do you fix the world after such a catastrophe like the Holocaust? So the Holocaust is where the Germans, which means may the name be erased, Hitler, the Nazis, um, they uh, set about to hunt down Jews wherever they were able to in hate and to kill and destroy. And the Rebbe's mission in, the, in life was to reach out to Jews, every single Jew, in love and to embrace and to uh, share and to uh, connect with every single Jew. And that's the message of Chabad, and that's the mission of Chabad throughout mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming down. And, and, and thank the other two rabbis uh, who uh, were on before, Rabbi Levi and uh, Rabbi Michael. And I just want to say that after this show, I, I fully intend to grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jay. Thank, thank you, Jay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Pleasure as always. Aloha and Shabbos. Thank you, Aloha. thank you. <laughs>